Like he's such a, a like he was able to see. Oh, the axe dragging the axe around him. What's up, brother? Lupe. Lupe, I love being in my natural state. You looking like a lumberjack. I look uh, I look like I'm embracing who I am at my core. <laughs> Wolverine yeah. button. Yo, y'all was smoking that talk. I mean, Royce is a Royce is a powerful dude. You know that. You've had the pleasure to be around him and create with his brother. You know he's, he runs deep, man. Royce is Royce is my my brother. Such an inspiration to me, just in in all facets of life. Man, I wish I, I'm I'm jealous. I always say this about TDE too. Um, people think I'm hating on T. Um, but I always say it's about TDE. Like y'all, like. It's to be, to be able to be around like that level of killer all day, not just perhaps sexually and creatively, like mm. that's one thing I'm jealous of. Certain crew, you know, I, I I haven't the opportunity to be embedded in crew and be challenged. Well, back in the day, my crew when I was in high school was definitely killers, um, and mm. even still nice, but not at the level that that y'all was able to get even some like td you have that's just that crazy to be in the studio with killers all day like those are those are some of the best sessions ever man ever because like you got to be that type of mc to like live for that shit like some niggas really live for that and we we live for that yeah you should get you should get some of that in, in your belt y'all want to slaughter the other hold up Remember when Royce told me no? I tried. That's why I just started Sosa. It was like, all right, fine. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. What Royce said was that if you joined, it would be a different entity with different energy. I don't care what Royce said. I was not allowed by the house. And I had to sneak my way in, cheated my way in through Crooked Eye. And I was in it for a couple minutes. <laughs> you was in it for you was in it for an hour or so. <laughs> I was in it for like 15 minutes. Then I Yo, you were one of the people that I wanted us to, you were one of the people I wanted us to collab with, like early. Like I'm like, we gotta, we gotta, I we gotta see what that's like. Well, I I heard what Royce said. Royce was like, Lupe ain't that nice. And then it took you to play mural for him so i could just imagine those conversations like let's be lupe's like weak like come on man <laughs> when 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 roy said that roy said never uh, say that no nah, well he's on the live just now when we first started talking he's just saying how uh you and him would talk about me and then you play mural for him he's like oh okay i understand that oh yeah okay yeah man i've done a lot of putting niggas on the good shit i can't lie i have I've done a lot of spreading the good word in hip hop behind the scenes. I'm proud of that. Uh, Joe, are the uh, people in, you're in like a Taliban cave right now? You, uh, cause you're there looking real Joe Latin right now is what they said. Oh, the girls are telling me I'm sexy still. <laughs> Sick of talking to dudes with no shirt on though. See, that's the problem with, with some of you rap niggas. Like y'all do it for the niggas. My like, demographic is 75% men. We'll say this for sure seeing those numbers yeah like and so y'all have to kind of like royce was just saying y'all become slaves to doing it for men i've never been in that boat buddy you are looking like an old spice commercial right now just that way yeah it's true don't body shame me stop I'm not, I'm not body i'm just saying you looking real thorough with the beard right now grays is popping out you looking like you haven't been outside in decades but it is i haven't I'm actually abiding by what the what they're telling us to do, which is stay in the house. New York is fucked up. What do you think about that, man? You think y'all gonna bounce back? Or you think it's changed forever? Cause y'all got it the most. Like y'all are in the world. Like New York is uh New York, New York, New Jersey even. New Jersey's really bad. Y'all think we'll y'all we'll, we'll we'll bounce back. It's just gonna be a slow, slow process. I believe all this shit is a some form of population control anyway. I mean, the population has to be controlled. Yo, yeah. I want to ask you the same question I asked Royce. Um, what is your ratio? Like, of, of how many songs do you have to get through before you know you got a, a keeper? And I know you're retired, clearly, 
Yo, we was just talking about this. Me and Parks, my engineer, we was just talking about this the other day. Uh, my ratio was pretty high. Mm. It was high. There weren't very many times where, well, no, what Parks said was the thing about me, I'll stop the, I'll stop the song after a verse. Like I'll put a verse, I'll go in the studio. If it's a verse there and some semblance of a hook and I ain't on it, I'm off it. It's mm -hmm. over. I'm not. So in terms of completing a song, if I was going about completing the song, I was keeping it. And that happened a lot. Mm. That happened a lot. I was probably keeping every, I would probably keep every three out of five songs. Mm. 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 I'm like, but now mind you, Royce is way more meticulous than me. Right. Like he, he taught me about being meticulous. He taught me about hearing things that just the normal person can't hear. He just taught me a lot about, he just taught me so much, so much. So I could understand him saying, nah, it's one out of every five. Cause he, he's like that. He'll go spend the night in the studio and just record and record and record and he'll pick i would have i put three albums out with the shit that Royce don't put out <laughs> like he got crazy shit that he'll sit on i have some crazy shit of his in this in my computer right now that just never went out because Royce would call and say yo man i did that verse four months ago i ain't that ain't really how i'm feeling right now now nah. mm. i'm like Royce. You smoke this verse. <laughs> nah, don't put it out. I'd rather recut it. Like, he's one of those. Mm, very meticulous. Mm -hmm. But I'm, it's, it's, I'm jealous that you that y'all even have that. Like, my the, the person I used to do that with was my business partner who's in prison. And uh, mm -hmm. he was my, like, I guess, quality control. Mm hmm it was just kind of like, it was things that I wouldn't even have, I would be neutral on. Like, I wouldn't even know. Like, I couldn't mm -hmm. tell if this was good or not. Mm -hmm. I knew I wrote it. I knew I knew the level was certain high. Maybe it was some some aspects to it that I didn't really enjoy or whatever. But I was just kind of like, I, I don't know. And it would take him to be like, no, nah, that's, that's, that's ridiculous. Put that out. Mm -hmm. You know, or if it was some on the other side where it was like, you know, not necessarily I think this is crazy and he doesn't. It'd be more like something that's super basic. But it'd be like, no, that's crazy. Right? But to me, it feels like super basic. And if I had to choose, like, no, nah, get the get get the get the one with the laser beams on it. He'd be like, nah, get the get the bow and arrow. You know what I'm saying? Like the bow mm -hmm. and arrow. So but my I think for me, when I when he went when he went away, he's still around. Like we he still do a little bit of quality control, but it it ain't the same. I think I'm around 10 to 1. Like every, oh, every 10, I'll find one. Something like that. Oh, you crazy, man. You niggas is crazy. Y'all are, are literally crazy. But but that's, I think if I was going like operating just off ratio, it would be something like that. Like when I, I think about how many beats do I go through before I pick a beat, you know, and I know if I pick that beat, I'm gonna do something to it. Kind of, kind of to your point, like you say, if you gonna, if you, if you gonna finish a verse and it's a hook there and, and you, it's solid, you gonna finish it. Like it, I go off the beat, so like I'll, I'll probably go through, man, maybe like ten beats before I get a beat that I feel like I can actually success, successfully rap to. Yo, you know what's funny about you, you rap dudes, like stop calling Joe, me Joe Budden. You are a rapper. Okay, just want to remind you thoroughly, Mr. Potty Podcast. You're okay. a rapper, bro. We know you from your raps. I'm referring to I you and Royce both both being like the aliens that y'all are and just what I notice about most of the aliens because we came up in a different time. So in some sense, we're programmed to maneuver a certain way, right? But let me tell you something. If I was active right now, like with the consumption, like with what needs to be done in music where you could get away with putting out 20 minute projects. Are y'all fucking kidding me? I can't believe you alien niggas that got the nerve to 
with your alien privilege sitting there saying, oh, every 10 songs, I make you one. The fuck is worse? You niggas is crazy. Y'all, <laughs> man, y'all let me niggas, man. <laughs> Do you think it's that? You think it's a, you think we're in a quantum game right now? For sure. Well, no. I think the fight for attention, we're, I think that we're, we're in competition with much more than each other now because there's a fight for attention if in all streams. Mm -hmm. Anything that can stream. If Marvel put out a movie tomorrow, it's in competition with us if we're trying to stream. So because there's that fight for attention and because of how the white people structured the, the, the split or how they determine what's what, we need 1,500 streams to do this, and you need this amount of streams, to, however they structured that, it behooves an artist to do this bullshit they're doing, which is put out 20-minute projects. Mm. And then give you the deluxe of that 20 minute, pro the deluxe, a deluxe on a 20 minute project. Okay. And then come back a few months later after they tour, after they milk all the tours and put out another 20 minute project. Like, I got songs this 20 minutes. You are the original. These, these niggas is lucky, man. You are the original 10 minute song maker. <laughs> Listen, yeah, but that hasn't ever, but that, that, aspect that attribute of mine hasn't escaped me right right my my podcasts are long <laughs> yes they are they're damn near three hours twice a week that's a lot of fucking talking but that's the same as rapper joe mm -hmm. rapper joe was gonna put 90 bars in a verse it's the same nigga Yo, y'all stop telling me to put a shirt on, man. I'm in my natural state. But put a shirt on, though. Like, they, they have a... Like, yeah. I mean, you be of the people, similar no, no. at least Royce put a shirt on. That don't mean... Nigga. Royce probably didn't have pants on, but you definitely ain't got a shirt on, and you need to put a shirt on. No, nah, don't worry about it. The nigga can't even feel sexy. I'm one of the people that's more so concerned about how the inside feels, Lupe. Oh, he's so, he's so intense. <laughs> Not about how the outside looks. Is this better for you? You look like a Navy SEAL right now. <laughs> and you got the nerve to sit on the phone with Roy's talking about, you don't know what to do, so you're going to put out some feelers. And what the, oh, I can't even listen to y'all, man. What's that, that? What are you talking about? Put out some feelers. You said you're going to put out some freestyles to kind of get a <laughs> sense of, you know what I what I what I what I was telling him was what I don't want to do on my album is just a bunch of freestyles, right? And I feel mm -hmm. like when I freestyles at the recent have been sounding the same, right? They've been very monotonous. Mm -hmm. And because it's to serve a particular purpose. Like I'm locked into like freestyles need to be bars and they need to be barred up and you need to have resting lines and set up but when with the project that I'm actually working on, because I'm actually working on a project literally sitting in front of my studio. Bam. Okay. And uh Okay. My piece was, uh, I need to exercise that demon of linearity, right? Into the freestyles. Mm -hmm. right? And I know it's true. So it's almost like I had to do a, I almost had to like vent myself of the linearity so it doesn't bleed into the project. Right, because I don't want the project to sound like a fucking freestyle. Because um, I feel like freestyles have a short shelf life. Right. I mean, it could be good. You'll get an impact, but like you said, there's a competition and competing with every for attention. Lupe, you don't know how to make nothing that has a short shelf life. You wasting time on nothing. If you went in the studio and tried to make something with a short shelf life, I think you would be in, uh, uh, incapable of doing that. Hmm, interesting. Why you say that, Joe? Because nothing in your history has a short shelf life. I mean, there's some things that have come and gone. I've had entire projects. That, that depends on that depends on who you're asking. True that. True. Come and come and gone. That happens in in the name of the that the actual transaction. Once you put it out and I receive it, it has come and gone. The shelf life is how long it's living with me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And none of your projects have a short shelf life. Even that bullshit you tried to put out that was short. It wasn't really short, but you tried to be shorter. 
Yeah. I, like, I know, I can see. And I'm like, oh, look at Lupe, he's cute. Like, he's trying to do it, but you can't. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm long-winded. Long in the tooth, as they say. Yeah, yeah, nigga. What, 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 are, you, what are you trying to change some shit around for? We looking for that. Like, back to mules. I can't get a mule from some somewhere else. So what type of alien privilege is that of you to say, all right, because I did that, I'm done doing that. What are you talking about? You're the only person that can do that. Like ESPN right now. It's a whole bunch of niggas on there that's stealing Stuart Scott's swag. But guess what? Stuart Scott is no longer with us. Rest in peace. You can't Stuart Scott like Stuart Scott. Mm. That's why I disagree with that shit you were saying earlier about Kendrick. Yeah, it's a lot of niggas trying to rhyme like Kendrick. You can't Kendrick like Kendrick. Like, you can't. You get this from one place. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think, well, well, first of all, first of all, Mural is, is I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm being a little coy. I do have a project that is like, okay, let's take Mural and do it times a thousand. And that's what Mickey Fax is kind of running around the internet, like, wait till you hear what Lupe did, because I've had it in the bag for a while. And well, how, how he know? He heard it? Yeah, I, 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 I snuck up on him and let him see it, and it blew his mind. And only a couple people have heard it and seen it. It's in the bag, but I'm, it's something that is like, oh, if you thought Mural was ridiculous, wait till you see this. But but to your point about, about the K-Dots, I mean... I don't know, man. I think once you hit a certain critical mass of a ton, and it's not just what's happening in the mainstream, right? I'm talking about these are people who will never get into the mainstream, right? Like it's the it's the cultural, it's a cultural expression that's happening down in the underground where you got a lot of dudes who maybe have um, aspirations to go mainstream, right? Mm-hmm. And the level of just kind of like, and I'm not, it's, it's not a knock, it's an observation, right? But it's like, mm-hmm. There's a ton of people that's doing that, right? And every rapper at the bar of niceness is doing that. And it's kind of like, yo, you know, like, you know, you like super pigeonholed, right? And what you're doing. Um, Mm -hmm. And is it a good thing? I mean, sure, you, 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 you enter into that box and you learn a lot of different things. You learn a lot of techniques, some quick time and some other things, layers. Um, But it's like, you look at every single dude I'm out is doing. It was like a little Wayne phenomenon back in the day. Right, for Wayne, mm-hmm. everybody in the underground is like Wayne, and it's just kind of like yo, like yo, <laughs> you know. But again, generational things happen, it's cycles and things, um, and it's something to be learned from. So my my my, my point wasn't to kind of belittle it, but it was just an observation I've been having. The kids were to me spitting, and it's like, oh yeah, you sound like you sound like you, the first thing you say is like yo, you sound like Kendrick. Yeah, but the thing about kids. The thing about kids, and we as as the the older ones have to acknowledge this, you got to give kids time to learn themselves. Right. Like, if I look back in my in my history, I can remember sounding like Method Man at, at some point in my life. Right. Like, and I can remember sounding like fucking cannabis at one point in my life. Like, I'm just saying, when these people were were in their bag as a rapper, that's why that's really why I don't listen to rap, to be honest with you. Like, you have to make your way into my heart for me to listen to you. But yeah, just I'll, casually, I'll, casually I'll, listening to rap music, yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna do that. I don't do because that. Either. I don't. What'd you say? I don't do that either. I don't listen to a lot of rap now either. No, I can't. I cannot do it. I can't. I'm. I don't want that on me <laughs> it's different it's different i can explain no, it. well i can't explain it but me still me still creating and i'm sure you still write a rap every now and then, or at least think of a rap i don't think you're completely out of the rap space for sure my brain but still functions so yes i i uh i don't want those influences like yeah, i don't exactly. want to I don't want to be sucked into what that is and start have that start into wow, I'm still trying to develop and craft and refine the style that I've garnered or generated. Cause I used to rap like Biggie. 
right? And it's it's out. Now I got freestyles and whole songs where I was rapping like Big. Then I got other joints where I'm rapping like Jay. Then I got other joints where I'm rapping like Ghostface. So a big part of my my early days was rapping like Ghostface and Raekwon. Like we loved it, right? Mm. Um, and it turned into your own style and your own tone. It was something else. Um, and now I do I do exercises where I try and rap like uh like Aesop Rock, or I do exercises rap like this person, that person. So I understand that the it being an influence, and I understand it being part of the training. Um, but it's like, yo, you're trying to get a career. <laughs> like you trying to get a career sounding like like my man. Like you gonna have some rude awakenings. Um, Listen, Lupe, the bar the bar is lower than it's ever been in term as as far as getting a career in rap music. You think? What do you I mean? Know. You think I, the bar? I know the, it is. Bar. Which bar? Not lyrically, like presentation wise, brand. The bar. No, 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 no. Don't add don't add all this complexity shit. I'm saying right this second, you said the bar is low in terms of having a career in our art form mm. i don't think that that can even really be argued <laughs> mm. Mm. yeah exactly guru the bar the bar the bar for it the bar to entry fam well no that, think about this sure. think about this hold up bar for sure the end of the level of being able to go and create man for me to create a song back in the day like to actually put a song together like we had to get go to the flea market to get the instrumental go over here to get the tape deck t plug in the tape deck to the thing get a cord to do this do that like the actual process that it took to actually create put your voice to a piece of music was so vast like the amount of pieces and parts you had to do versus plug in your phone and just start rapping for sure now on the technology front i think technology is responsible for that but i don't know if you're talking about technology joe you keep trying to I think what I'm saying is very clear. <laughs> Lupe, niggas was niggas was spending the night outside of record labels to get some type of attention. <laughs> like in in any area that you want to fit what I'm saying, it's still it's still applicable. Mm. In terms of creation, in terms of entry, the bar is low on all of it. So much so, I mean, I don't need to tell you that there are label signing people based off instagram followers right mm -hmm. i don't have to tell you that mm -hmm. i don't have to tell the fans that this is stuff that and that's what i mean this stuff is like public information <laughs> that when i when i was trying to get a record deal it was big for me to get the def jam because def jam had all the niggas that could spit y'all had all the niggas i grew up on ll Met the man, fucking run the whoever the fuck was over there. Slick rant, like you know what I mean? Of course you want to go to Def Jam, but uh, yeah, no, let me shut up. No, no, no. But I think even still, though, bro, even still, there was a what did they? What did they? I don't know if they told you this because we we probably got deals at around the same time or was in the process of getting deals around the same time. Those, those mid those mid thousands, right? Mm -hmm. What they tell you? You got to go get popping in your own hood. You had to go get them followers. It, it, it wasn't Instagram followers to be had. It wasn't social media to be had. But it was definitely like, you got to, are you popping in your own neighborhood? Are you popping in your own city? And so you have artists who nobody knew, but in their city, they was the man. And they come up to the label and they would bring quote unquote followers even back then. Like, yo, you know, I'm getting X, Y, Z spins on the radio or my name is popping in, in my little town or in my little city. <laughs> So they mm -hmm. told us that about Chicago. They was like, man, are you getting what you, what you doing in your in Chicago? Are you the man in Chicago? Because why you gonna if you ain't the man in Chicago, what makes you think you're gonna be the man in New York or be the man in Florida? If you be the man, if you don't even know how to be the man in your own backyard. Or well, what you what you saying, Lupe? And I don't damn, I don't mean for this to get so deep and mushy here, but what you're saying here is will be true and well will and has been true in every age of hip-hop from since we was doing it actually since before that they want to see verification of some form mm -hmm. they want to see numbers from somewhere to validate something 
which is ironic because numbers will be the same thing that they use to devalue you when they want to do that. Right. And that's why you can't get trapped in the numbers game. Right. At first it was Master P and them niggas running around selling shit out their trunk and the labels wanted to see those numbers. Then it was when we came around, go get hot in the street, go go heat up your local local mix show or the mixtapes, do that. Then we had mixtape games. Then we had the fucking now we got the SoundCloud era. This niggas popping off that. Now we in the TikTok era. Mm-hmm. Where you can't even put a song out without the TikTok numbers. There, there's gonna always be some form of getting numbers from somewhere. And that's why we need niggas like us, because it's all a lie. <laughs> it's all a lie. All of it. Which numbers do you think were most valuable? If you had to go like you went through the era of, of the different uh the different eras of different metrics and different numbers, which numbers do you think? Because they're there. Like, we're not going to get away from it. It's part of the program. It is whether we choose to buy into it or not. It's a reality. Which era's numbers do you think were the most valuable, the most representative of, say, quality? None. <laughs> now, what I will say to that, though, Lupe, is... Complete rejection of the entire entire structure. I feel you. Because all they do is find new ways to fluff and hide the numbers. And most artists can't can't afford to audit every time they think something is funny with numbers. They're going to always fluff numbers. Mm-hmm. That's like when, when back in the day when, when I left Def Jam, I thought I could go in. You know, I still had a relationship with Sam Crespo, who was the radio guy That's at Def Jam. Yeah, he was over, Sam was over at, uh, he was at Atlantic. Shout out to Sam. Exactly. Yeah. So what I thought was I could leave the major label and just use my relationship with Sam Crespo to get a record plan if I, if I had confidence in the record. Mm-hmm. And I quickly learned that, nah, that's not even an option. That shit is expensive, number one. And because you, he my man, he's going to let me know that most of these radio niggas are just fluffing the numbers in the Z markets and taking the bag from you niggas, uh-huh. charging A market prices and i'm like damn like everywhere you turn you could spot where the fluff is in the numbers fucking sales like you can't it's too many different places or there was too many different places to hide numbers so that's and that's going to always be today you know who reports the streaming numbers to you the streaming companies (laughs) what do we have back in the day big champagne Who's 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 put spin out metrics back in the day? You had to get your big champagne numbers up. Things like a first, but I hear you. Yeah, man. So no. But what I will say to that is this. In the late 90s, early 2000s, when all the money was up, like when the labels were actually spending real money on artists. Like exorbitant numbers, that's probably when it matched the most. Because mm. you could actually physically, tangibly see money. Like you could look at a Buster Rhymes video and see the money. When Hype Williams walked on the set, you, you could see it. And then that cut back, Napster and all that shit. And then it was like, all right, we got we to gotta hide all the money. Can't spend nothing. Mm-hmm. We don't have money. It was a depression. <laughs> yeah, they fixed everything up, man. These guys are good. And that's why I say you artists, because I don't play that game. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I think there's I think there's a recognition. I don't play that game with these niggas. 